Hello everyone. Today I am going to explain uh, one of the questions that I have posted in Biochemistry Made Easy, <coughs> which is a Facebook group that I uh, uh, usually I will be posting my questions there every alternate days or so. So one of the questions that I have recently posted there, it says that uh, a two-year-old boy was brought to the emergency room with a history of fracture of his right humerus. On physical examination, he has shown to have abnormal dentition and conductive hearing loss. X-ray of his humerus has shown hairline fracture and several old healed fractures. Which one of the following would apply to this child? Basically, the question stem says that the boy came with a history of uh, fracture of it is long bone, one of the long bone, right humerus. And also apart from that, he has an abnormal dentition which you really need to take a note of it. And also he has the conductive hearing loss. And one more uh, important uh, point that you really need to note here is he has uh, several old healed fractures. So if you club all these points together, so a two-year-old boy with uh, multiple uh, old fractures, conductive hearing loss and abnormal dentition, so, collectively, so the one of the differential diagnoses that we can uh, think of is uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. So, basically, osteogenesis imperfecta is because of defect in type 1 collagen. And there are several types of osteogenesis imperfecta. So, they can be classified into type 1 to type 7 osteogenesis imperfecta. In type 1 to type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta, so we generally see uh, bone deformities uh, giving rise to pathological fractures. We may see dental abnormalities there which is referred as dentigerous uh, imperfecta. And also there will be conductive or sensory neural type of hearing loss in these patients. And one more important point that you may see, you will see in uh, type 1 to type 3 osteogenesis imperfecta is uh, blue sclera. So of course blue sclera is not mentioned here. Blue sclera is a kind of buzzword. So sometimes in examination you may not all the time, uh, you may not get uh, the buzzwords. Okay, so here in my question I purposely avoided giving that buzzword. Because if I would have mentioned blue sclera, definitely the question would have been easier type, and uh, so it would have made uh, no like uh, choosing the choice much easier. Anyway, so blue sclera is one of the important signs seen. If it is given, uh, for sure your answer will be osteogenesis imperfecta. So I was telling about type one and type three types of osteogenesis imperfecta. Type one to type three. Whereas type 4 to type 7 osteogenesis imperfectas, so they will show bone deformities but generally you don't see abnormal dentition and blue sclera in them. Now let's move on to the choices. So let's see which choice is correct for this particular case stem. So the option A says that the boy will have blackish pigmentation over his ear lobes. Basically, the black blackish pigmentation we generally see in a case called uh, alkaptonuria. In an alkaptonuria, where uh, it's because of the deficiency of an enzyme called homogentisate oxidase enzyme. So, basically, homogentisic acid generally it will be converted to malyl acetoacetic acid by homogentisate oxidase enzyme. So, whenever there is a mutation or deficiency in homogentisate oxidase, homogentisate acid accumulates and that will be oxidized to quinone derivative and quinone derivatives have got uh, affinity towards the collagen and elastic tissue, particularly elastic tissues. So, they will accumulate and that will lead to blackish pigmentation. Generally, you, will, uh, you may see yeah, overall generalized blackish pigmentation in alkaptonuria which is referred as ochronosis. So anyway, so the option A it basically goes for alkaptonuria but we are thinking about osteogenesis imperfecta as our differential diagnosis that's why 
option A, I'll rule it out. Then option B, this boy will have mutation in his type 2 collagen. Mutation in type 2 collagen will give rise to uh, what is called as achondroplasia or basically the dwarfism. Dwarfism is because of type several types of mutation seen in type 2 collagen and in dwarfism generally we don't see dental abnormalities and uh, repeated fractures. So that's why I will rule out option B here. And then third option, this boy is suffering from parental abuse. One of the, uh, the reason that uh, this option is inserted here is the parental abuse will be one of the disease or say one of the you know, uh, cause for uh, kind of differential diagnosis for the uh, repeated fractures in a two-year-old boy is a battered ba baby syndrome. The ba battered baby syndrome is because of the parental abuse uh, where you will see uh, several old healed fractures, repeated fra uh, healed fractures because of the trauma. But uh, in battered baby syndrome, generally we don't see dental abnormalities, conductive hearing loss. That's why I will rule out this option C as a choice for this. Now s option D, some other member in his family tree may show similar signs. So, since osteogenesis imperfecta, it follows autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. So, if you see the family tree, one or the other family member may show the similar signs and symptoms. In that sense, I will go for option D as a correct choice at this point in time. So, now the option E. Option E says this boy will show dislocation of lens bilaterally. Bilateral dislocation of lens commonly seen in a genetic disorder, it is commonly seen in Marfan syndrome and homocystinemia. So, Marfan, the physical findings in Marfan syndrome, usually the, the patient will be uh, taller than the average height, arachnodactyl will be present, so there will be heart wall problems like mitral valve prolapse or aortic root dilatation, aortic aneurysm, there may be lung uh, issues like spontaneous pneumothorax so joint abnormalities will be present so generally these patients like Marfan syndrome patients they may not show repeated fractures so in that sense I am not in favor of dislocation of lens bilaterally even in homocystinemia several of Marfan syndrome signs they overlap but homocystinemia they are the, some of the individual signs which are uh, quite distinct from what you see in Marfan syndrome like osteoporosis which is seen in homocystinemia but not seen in Marfan syndrome and uh, mild to moderate mental retardation or decreased IQ is seen in uh, homocystinemia but not seen in Marfan syndrome. So in that sense both Marfan syndrome and homocystinemia although they have overlapping signs but they have some quite distinctive signs to differentiate. Anyway, so both Marfan syndrome and homocystinemia, they don't show some of the signs that are mentioned in the case stem. So in that sense, I'll rule out option E. So ruling out option A, B, C and E. So option D appears to be correct choice for this particular question. Thanks for watching and uh, keep looking for my other videos or for my future videos which will be coming up soon. Thank you all.